this wasn't going to be just another game. And we didn't pretend otherwise. We knew how much it meant to ourselves, to our families, and to everyone who supports the club. It was an emotional week for all the lads, but it was important to make sure we controlled the emotions come match day. We had a job to do. This was our day. You know, I really did believe that if we played the, as well as we could, um, that we, we could win every game. I, I genuinely believed that. Um, and I told that to the players. But I also told them that if you don't work as hard as the opposition, um, then you're, you're going to find it difficult, regardless who you're playing against. Because all, all the teams in the Championship, they're well organised and, and they work really, really hard. Um, but if you're sort of better prepared and you, your organisation is better against their sort of weaknesses, if you like, but certainly with the quality we had in the squad, I felt we could sort of win games and break teams down. And two things I always talk about is make sure that the opposition never outwork us um, and we never give in, ever. The games were getting tougher, they were getting a bit more intense, a bit tighter, because teams had so much to play for getting towards the end of the season. Brighton weren't safe when we went there. We were coming in, other teams were still winning around us, but we were slowly making, making our way up and, and sucking them back in. And now it was all about, let's make sure we get in there, you know, they're going to drop points. And, once we get in that top two, we'll make sure we stay there. Ball sent on for Redmond to chase. He'll get there. What's he going to do? Joe Bennett, he turns inside him. He runs inside. He's driving into the box, tries to lay it across to the far post. Who's it going to be? It's in Brilliant. for Bradley Hustle. Johnson. Bradley Johnson gets his 11th goal of the season. And the man who just came on the pitch, Nathan Redmond, instantly makes an impact. Norwich City, 1-0 up away at Brighton. As I said before, you know, his motto was concentrate on this game. You know, if you don't win this game, the next game doesn't matter. Yeah, we, we had games where we knew it was going to be tough. He always said to us, you know, if, if you match the other team's work ethic, work rate, no team should work harder than you. And um, that's the way he wants his teams to play. And um, I think in that run of games, we've done that. You know, we outworked every team, outplayed every team. And then, you know, your talent shines through at the end. And that's what he said. Bright sunshine here in Greater Manchester. Here we go, Norwich fans in tremendous voice. And they've travelled in great numbers given the sheer amount of miles involved in this. And we're off on another Saturday afternoon, another tenth Saturday afternoon of Championship football. Norwich City kick off in second place in the Championship. That day was one of the hardest. That was the worst day of my season, you know, not being able to play, but sitting there behind the bench and you know, I had my phone on me and the lads were in front of me. So I could sit there and I could see the other results coming in and I knew that we had to win. Norwich City go in front, it will go down as Graham Doran's first goal for the club and it's the perfect start to a big week for Norwich City. They're in front already away from home with eight and a half minutes gone. Bolton nil, Norwich won. Bolton's first chance of the game and Adam LaFondra takes it. I knew the other teams above us uh, who were chasing promotion as well were, were winning and it, it was hard, I just wanted to, it was, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing I could do. Um, I could sit there and, and see the results coming in and I was just hoping that something happened. It's one of those games where I'm still at the other end thinking please, 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 just, just get one more chance. Jerome headed into the penalty area. Shots for Gary Hooper. Puts it over the keeper. Yes! Gary Hooper in the third minute of stoppage time.
Hoops, who, who didn't really play that much before, to come on and, and get the, the goal. And you can tell by the way everyone celebrated them. Um, it was just a massive relief. And yeah, you know, Ross did touch on it then that then when they went up before, you know, it was always the last minute goals that, that Norwich never ever gave up until the final whistle. Norwich defending manfully, it's all hands to the pump as the ball comes across, it hits Brabham, uh, it goes out of play, and Norwich City have done it! What a win! So often, promotion campaigns are decided with late, late goals. Especially when Hoops' late one goes in that late against Bolton, you really start believing this is going to be our season. Last time around when we got promoted, I remember, we scored late goals like that, and lads start thinking, yeah, this is, this is it. Yeah, it was... They're special times, I mean, as a manager, as a player, when I mean, you score in the sort of last minute, because um, it's, it's such a thin line between going home disappointed or going home really pleased. Um, and thankfully for us, the Bolton game, as you say, was one of the games where you walk away thinking, we've, we've now got a real chance. It's always a good atmosphere, um, good crowd, good place to play, especially under floodlights on a Tuesday night. We've got a couple of obviously ex Leeds players, which adds a little bit extra to it. Um, it'll be a tough game. Uh, if we did do it, it'll, it'll be it'll be the biggest achievement I think of my, of my career. Like I said, after last year to bounce back straight away, it'll be will be an amazing feat, and um, yeah, it'll be. Like I said, I've done it before, fortunately, and. Graham's done it before as well. Wits has won titles up the road, so everyone knows how, how good it will feel and how special it will be, and hopefully we've uh, got enough legs to do it. He uh, makes a good cup of tea. He runs my bath at a good temperature. You can't ask for more, really. He's, he doesn't snore, although he does talk in his sleep at times. Actually, you know what you do? You go, ah, breathe really deep. That's annoying. <laughs> when he does that, that's annoying. I'd rather he snored than do that, but no, he's good. And now Graham's joined the crew. We're trying to get a room where all three of us can, you know, live together for a bit, but the club aren't willing to pay for that. So at the minute we just have to do the two and Graham comes in until it's bedtime and then goes back to sleep. I never thought we were slipping out of it or it was slipping away from us. I always thought we had the capability to do it, but it was becoming harder and harder. We were getting a great result one week and then a not so great one the next week and it was we were sort of floating in about seventh and sixth, seventh and sixth place, and we couldn't really kick on from there. But obviously, since the managers come in with the results we've had, we've uh, kicked right on the mentality, shifted, you know, uh, hugely now. We know we've got um, four games to. If we win them all, we're up. It's as simple as that. I've mentioned the four games again. Um, if we win four games, it's as simple as that. And uh, like I said, that's the mentality now. We go into every game knowing what the carrot is there. It's so close now. The rewards there, and it's so close, and it's so big not just for the football club, for us as players, for the families, for everyone involved. So yeah, we know exactly what we've got to do and um, what we've got to do to get there. It was quite strange because um, we spoke about having no fear before the game. We spoke about making sure we started with a real high intensity. Without really going into specifics, I think 
a lot of the stuff we'd worked on during the week, um, we didn't carry out in the first 10 minutes, which was really disappointing. You know, we went back through the video on the Monday after the game, um, and a lot of the stuff that we'd spoke about, we didn't do well enough. Well, Boston got a flick, and in it goes! Well, the Doma arrived on the back post, and he wants the credit! The, the complexion of the game completely changes, you know, and I thought we sort of probed and we had an odd chance here and there. I think Johnny Housen had a great chance with a header in the first half, and in the second half I think we had sort of Russell Martin had a sort of shot blocked, um, which was destined to go on as well. So we had opportunities in the game, but we didn't really do enough. I think, in a way, the way they celebrated after the game, we were quite angry about it. It was, it was like they burst our bubble. Um, it was sat in the changing room after, you know. It was, it was hard to take. The manager came in after the game, said we're going to have to do it the hard way through the playoffs, but we're more than capable of doing it. And I think everyone in the changing room at the time believed it. Um, you know. We said some home truths about where we were when, when the manager came in and how hard we've worked to get to this position. Disappointment, no questions, yeah. I think everybody was disappointed, a bit deflated. Um, the last thing I do, but after, after a match, is I never go in and criticise the players. Never. Um, the reason being is they can't do anything about it then. So all I'm really doing is going in and doing it for my benefit and gaining a bit of stick. <laughs> so that doesn't have any sort of lasting effect really, you know, so after the game is not the time to talk about it, I don't think, I think it's too raw then, you know, half times generally, like if I'm not happy with something in the first half, half times the time where I'll sort of raise, raise things and, and deal with a few issues and, and let people know what's expected of them, um, but after the match, that's never the time to, so there's no point in giving anybody a hard time after doing what they've done, because they can't change it at that stage. I knew it was going to be a switch. You know, it was always going to be a switch for me. I just, it's been quite strange because I've sort of crammed about 10 years worth of experience as a manager in it too. Um, and I just knew that for whatever reason, bigger games were going to come for me and for the group. Um, and it couldn't have got any bigger than a switch in the semi final. Delighted, absolutely delighted. Um, we said going into it, uh, the likelihood was uh, if we could pick a team who was going to finish in the playoffs, we would have picked Ipswich. You take all the emotion out of that occasion and you say, right, well, it's a football game between two teams. Who's got the better team? Who's got the better player? And it was us. We had um, our end of season party as well after, after, that, uh, after that game. We had the awards and, you know, that's all everyone was talking about was, was the Ipswich game. Great, bring it on, really. And the fact we beat them twice in the season and we knew how they would play. Uh, they didn't change the way they play at all, really. They had one way of playing and it was successful for them and it was hard to play against. But the fact we beat them twice, um, I think we thought we were all fairly happy that it was going to be Ipswich because I know 
it added extra importance and extra pressure on everyone else outside the group. We, all, we were all pretty relaxed about it and uh, looking forward to it actually. People expected us to go and open up and be a big, expansive type sort of team and go and sort of try and outplay them. But I certainly felt for that game, if we did that, it might have cost us. Um, and then they left us sort of chasing our tail at home. And I don't think that was something we could afford. I think we had to go there and make sure we were nice and solid. But I don't think going back to our place, that was a bad result. You know, I felt going back to our place, we knew we were going to have to be more ex expansive um, and go and try and open the game up. And that's why Wes and Nathan we played at home and I felt we had enough attacking intent to, to go on and break them down. Whenever you feel like this, there was something extra in that on the ball city being belted out by the supporters at Carrow Road. I'm just watching the captains, Russell Martin and Luke Chambers now standing with the mascots and the match officials having their pictures taken in the centre circle. We're really not far away now from the start of this. If we get through the first half without conceding a goal, we'll win the game in the second half. Watching Ipswich and nearly all their games, the first 60 minutes is when they're at their most highest intensity. I mean, because they're fresh and they're getting about the pitch and they're playing for second balls and they're physical and they're in your face. And I just felt if we get through the first half hour without conceding and we stood up to the physical challenge and we stood up to the battle, that the longer the game went on, the game would become more spread and it would give you a, sort of more creative players more space to play. Um, so my biggest concern was the fact that we needed to make sure we didn't concede in that first half hour. Oh, Whitaker's stolen the ball on halfway. Good anticipation from Whitaker, and he's managed to get it to Wes Houlihan. Redmond's in space outside him. Houlihan plays in Nathan Redmond with a great chance here. Nathan Redmond! Oh, that's handball! That's handball on the line! And it's a penalty, and it has to be a red card for the Ipswich player. I think it's Christoph Berra who's been sent off. Berra's been sent off for handling the ball on the goal line, but Norwich have a penalty. I thought Nathan Redmond should have shot first time with his left foot, I thought he'd missed the opportunity, but he kept his head, he got the ball out of his feet, got hold of the shot. Norwich have a penalty in front of the Barkley end, and it's Wes Houlihan, their longest serving player. We thought this game might come down to penalties, it's Wes Houlihan! And he sends the goalkeeper the wrong way! It's part of the plan almost. We spoke about how it was going to be. It was always going to be that way first half. It means so much to everyone, to Ipswich, to the fans, to Norwich, to the, to the supporters here. Um, and especially with the way they play, they make it really hard for us. It was never going to be easy. Horrible, direct, physical play. And we knew if we matched them for that and we matched their, their work rate, then they'd, they'd run out of steam.
even as a player and now as a manager, I never really get too excited or too, you'll never see me sort of jumping for joy and singing the way others, some, some other managers do. Um, I, I take quiet satisfaction for doing my job well. The Ipswich games in particular because it's a derby are for the people who, who travel the distances and put their money in and, and, and go and support them. They're the most sort of people I'm, I'm pleased for the most. Yeah, I wanted the game to be played straight after. You know, I would, that's that's the type of player I am. I, I could have played it. I could have played again the next day. I wanted it. That's how quick I wanted it. But yeah, it was tough. You know, um, I, had a, I had a bit of a no one would know, but I had a bit of an injury going into to the second leg of the Ipswich game, and it was a tough game for me to get through. And um, I got through it. So um, I think the week leading up to the Middlesbrough game, my main focus was on just myself getting fit for the game. You know. I think it was frustrating that the, the wait was so long after the Ipswich game. I think we, we would all like to play the game, you know, three or four days later because we were we felt really good. The manager and the staff were, were brilliant in keeping us in check and not making us too tense and keeping us relaxed because it's you know your season culminates in one game, your whole season is defined in one game. But during that week, you couldn't really sense it. I think if anything, I felt the lads were so relaxed in training. I didn't know if it was a good thing at first. I thought, oh no, you know, we need to have a bit of an edge. We need to be a bit. But it was at it, but it was just really relaxed. The changing was brilliant. Everyone was on a high. Uh, we knew what was at stake. Uh, I think the club done it well. Uh, we went down to the Grove on the Monday. Uh, played a couple of rounds of golf. Went to Wembley. You know, had to look around the stadium to make sure that when we got there on the day, we wasn't we weren't overawed by it, uh, which I think was the right thing to do. Um, and then we came back back to Norwich. We had a day off on the Wednesday and then we prepared like we would for any other game. The one thing we spoke about was the fact that we needed a bit of downtime after the Ipswich games. Because um, also going back to the, the sort of Wigan effect, um, I wanted to make sure that, that we weren't completely sort of too intense leading up to the match. Because I think that sort of intensity, you can't keep that up for, for a long period of time. And you could see the determination in the players, how desperate they were to sort of achieve the goal of getting promotion and winning that match. This wasn't going to be just another game. And we didn't pretend otherwise. Our preparation was meticulous. The week couldn't have gone better. I think the players were more relaxed than anyone else. We knew how much it meant to ourselves, to our families, and to everyone who supports the club. My dad confirmed three days before the game that he wouldn't be able to make it because of his illness. He said it would be one of the proudest days of his life to watch me lead the team out of Wembley. And he told me to remember how much I would have dreamt about this as a boy. It was an emotional week for all the lads, but it was important to make sure we controlled the emotions come match day. We had a job to do. This was our day.
most emotional moment for me was, was being able to sing the national anthem at Wembley. You know, it, it actually did bring a tear to my eye. I thought I was going to, I thought I was going to crumble. Uh, but um, you know, that's something I'd always wanted to do. Something I'd always, as a footballer, any footballer dreams of doing that. Uh, to be able to sing your national anthem at your national stadium, whether it be for your country or or a playoff game like it was. Um, you know, that really, really was the last piece of the jigsaw for me. Jerome has Rob Diala here. Still Cameron Jerome! Playing them so recently and them doing what they did to us, it, it really worked in our favour because that wasn't there was no way that was gonna happen again. Hulal. Redman. A crisp efficiency about Norwich just now. Arson inviting Whitaker for. He'll go low and find Redman! It's two! It's a blistering start from Norwich City! Six weeks before that, they beat us and and it felt like they'd, they'd won the league and, and so we beat them when it mattered. You know, they've, they've beaten us 4-0 uh, and 1-0 during the season but we can sit here now and say that didn't matter because we beat them when, when it mattered. You know, I'd looked at sort of Middlesbrough stats and I think there was only one time the whole season where they went a goal behind and came back and it was against Bolton and that's what we set out to do, you know, was to really go and try and hurt them in that sort of opening period of the game um, and thankfully for us we managed to do that. short career you know in not many people experiencing that but to do that and I was aware of that straight away and I felt that straight away it was just to do that how lucky we were really to do it as a group of lads as a team as a football club you know I spoke to to neighbours and people in Norwich and they'll remember that forever you know dads going to, with their kids and three generations of families going to Wembley together with their team with their football club that's that's special and for me to look up and see all my family in, in, the, in the same area, my kids, although they're probably not old enough to remember it, um, for me to share that with them, I get emotional talking about it now, as you can probably tell, but yeah, special. I was in tears. Um, you know, I think Benno and Hoops come up to me first. So the, yeah, it was just a relief, you know, I've, I've worked so hard to, to get back in the Premier League and so to do it at Wembley, like I said, in front of my family, in front of all them 40,000 Norwich fans, I'm so happy that, like I said, I stayed at the club um, when we went down and I've always said I wanted to get them back to where they are and um, where we belong to be in. and I've done that now. I'm part of the team that, that won at Wembley and not many people can say that. I'm just a big believer in why should, should anybody else be better than you? I mean, I, I genuinely do believe that. I, I just don't, I don't buy into the fact that 
people are born to become a manager, are born to become whatever they are. Um, I just think, well, why can't I or why can't any of my team become one of the best players? I mean, there's no reason that that can't be the case. You know, if, if, if you want to be successful and you want to get somewhere, you need to be prepared to put the work in and work harder than other guys that are, that are doing the job, you know, and that's one thing that I'm, I'm prepared to do is, is put the work in. It's just such a roller coaster year and an emotion, emotionally draining year that um, I think you just have to embrace every single moment of it. And, and like I touched on there, you know, these, these sort of seasons don't happen very often. You know, as much as I love the playoff and love the playoff final, I don't want to do it again. I'll tell you that, you know, I, I want to maintain myself and, and the club as a Premier League club and a Premier League player and a goalkeeper. And that's the goal now. So if we stay in the Premier League next season, it's as big an achievement as winning the playoff final. And I think as long as you're setting yourself goals like that and trying to improve every season, you'll always, you'll always have something to aim for.